Good morning, ladies. Thank you for that worship, Terry and Nancy. That last song, is that somewhat new? No? Oh, I've never heard it before. Amazing. Beautiful song. The Paris theme, I love the decorations. Everybody did such an awesome job. The team that decorated and set up. I know it takes a lot of work to put on an event like this. And girls, you did a, an awesome job. I was looking for my glasses and I go, oh yeah, I put them on my head. <laughs> My theme that Diane has given me, oh, and before I start, Diane, Ron just said that uh, golf has, has no meaning without playing with Roger. He misses him dearly, and we do too. I know you do. Such a good friend. Oh, I got a little... Emotional here. Okay, salvation love. Romans 5, 8 was my topic for this morning. Now, the definition of salvation is a person or thing that saves or rescues. A spiritual rescue is, all, is from sin and death. Have you girls felt like you've been rescued? I certainly Feel rescued and loved by Jesus Christ. Romans 5.8 reads, But God demonstrated his own love, his unconditional love, toward us, in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Also, in John 3.16 and 17, which I consider the most important scriptures in the New Testament, along with our theme scripture too. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. And a lot of times we memorize that verse <clears throat> but we don't memorize or read 17, and 17 is just important, just as important. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but that through him he might be saved. Do you know that you are saved this morning? Are you secure in your salvation? How do you know? I know I'm saved. I was there. When I prayed that God would reveal himself to me, he did. And I repented of my sins and received Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. And he came into my heart and I became born again. I received the gift of salvation from sin and death. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I do want to lift up anyone here that might have come with a friend or a sister or a mother and maybe hasn't secured their salvation. Maybe they believe that you're alive and that you died on the cross, but they never invited you to come in to get to know you personally and to receive the gift of salvation. I pray that uh, no one would walk out of here without knowing and securing their salvation through the blessed hope of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father, for demonstrating your love by dying on the cross, by giving your Son for us, that the shedding of his blood would wipe away all of our sins. We thank you and praise you for the gift of salvation. In Jesus' name, amen. So girls, here's my salvation story. <clears throat> A long, long, <laughs> long 
time ago. <laughs> I can't believe it. I've been walking with the Lord for 40 years. I can't, it, it, it went by really, really fast. But um, uh, that brings us closer to seeing Jesus face to face. And, uh, and we'll be there with Roger soon, rejoicing. And Mary Stevens, your husband Jack, Pastor Chuck Smith, Steve Mays, all the saints, all the pastors in the Calvary Chapel movement that have gone to heaven and that secured their salvation and that have received Christ as their savior, they know that they know that they know that they're saved. They're, they're in heaven with Jesus face to face. And that's what I'm looking forward to. Um, this world has really nothing to offer. Been there, done that, haven't we girls? <laughs> um, yeah, there's pleasure in sin. Yeah, there's uh, some awesome places to go, like Paris. Um, and I did have a chance to go to Paris. We were on a trip to Israel. We were coming back. We took one of our first or second team. It was probably our first, our second team of, um, uh, of our church that went and uh, we also went with Roger and Diane to Israel, but we had a six hour layover in Paris. And I thought, awesome, Ron, let's rent a bus and, and do a little quick tour and go see the Eiffel Tower. Maybe we can get into the Louvre and, and look at all the famous paintings. And so that's what we did. It was awesome. God opened up the door, we found a, a, a bus, driver that would take us, he spoke English, and we ran right into him and said, hey, do you know of any uh, uh, buses we could rent? How do you do that? We'd like to take a quick tour uh, in Paris. And he said, oh, I'm your man. So he led us onto his bus and we went over to the Eiffel Tower and I just stood there in awe and I was thinking, God, you're so good. You, you." I always had a desire to go to Paris and see the Eiffel Tower, um, but the Louvre was, is closed that day, so I didn't get, we didn't have time to go through the museum, the art museum there. But we saw the Seine River, we saw the bridge, we went up to the artist quarter, and um, to take an escalator on top of this hill overlooking Paris. And all the artists, are painting there, and uh, it, it's a spectacular view. And we were able to uh, spend a few hours in Paris, and the bus driver got us to the uh, airport on time. We jumped on the airplane, I fell asleep, woke up, and oh, praise the Lord, we're home. <laughs> I love how God is into detail. And you know God's blessing you because you tell him, oh Lord, wouldn't that be fun if I could do this or go here? Or, uh, and he's amazing. He blesses us above and beyond um, the things that we ask for or think. He's an amazing father. He's an amazing bridegroom. He's an amazing best friend. Get to know your savior. He, if you don't have a husband, if you're single, make Jesus your best friend and your husband. He loves you. So back to my story, my salvation story. A long, long time ago, I was born in Burbank, California in the year 1950. So you can do the math. <laughs> I can't think, oh. Uh, California to my parents, Frank and Donna. Stephanie and Sandy uh, were my sisters and I have a brother named Jack. My parents moved to La Puente and that's in the San Gabriel Valley. It's next to Baldwin Park, El Monte. Um, kind of a crazy town back then. It was kind of like a chicken ranch. Far, it had a lot of farms, but it also had a section of 
new inexpensive homes that they developed. So my parents decided to move there and we bought a home and grew up in La Puente. Is, does anybody know where La Puente is? Oh, oh, quite a few. It's amazing. Um, but I always wanted to move to Huntington Beach, especially growing up as a teenager. So I now live in Huntington Beach. Another blessing. God's into the details. Okay, so my parents moved to La Puente. They bought a home. And so when we became uh, teenagers, our parents just started fighting. There was a lot of drinking going on and partying with their, especially my dad's party friends. And so my mom and dad uh, ended up getting a divorce. And it was devastating. It's, it's a crushing experience for young teenagers to uh, have a divorce and come from divorce uh, home. Um, so that kind of started the spiral down uh, for me. Um, the divorce pretty much knocked the wind out of me. Um, I started goofing off, ditching school, didn't care. You know, we, uh, my poor mom had to work two jobs to make the, the, you know, rent payment. We had to babysit, clean house, and, and do whatever we could to uh, make ends meet. So we had to grow up fast. So with little supervision, and in growing up in the late 60s, early 70s, I became a hippie. And it was the, the big fad back then, and a, a really big movement that happened in the late 60s and early 70s. Um, the hippie thing was cool. Uh, I still like to shop at uh, Free People. Does anybody know where that store is? <laughs> it's where all the hippie clothes are. They still have the fringe purses and the beads and, and the big flowing tops and the bell bottoms. and. And I, I love that store. Um, so do my kids. And actually, my daughters like that store, too. It's kind of expensive, but uh, it's a cute store. But anyway, um, I became a hippie. All our friends were pretty much hippies, too. And we all started exper experimenting with LSD and marijuana. But I never inhaled. We loved going to the beach. We loved concerts at the Shrine Auditorium. Um, we danced at the Whiskey A Go Go. Remember that dance? And crazy dance. And after a few years of partying, I found myself empty and alone, thinking there has to be more to life. I have to read my notes. I'm old. <laughs> One day, some friends invited me over to visit. The same friends that used to sell me pot invited me over, and I pulled into a shopping center in Baldwin Park. Now, Baldwin Park is now famous for, um, a, a, I would say, about 15 or 20 young men that are all pastors or assistant pastors or in ministry. Of course, Raul Reese being one of them and my husband. I don't know why God reached down and grabbed that group of guys and saved them and then put them in the ministry. I guess because they can relate to the majority of, of uh, people. So anyway, I got this invitation to visit some friends from high school. And um, I stopped by the shopping center to buy a Coke. I was thirsty. I was blown away by two stone foxes <laughs> standing outside of a clothing store. And one was Ron Wilkins. 
And the other one was a guy named Bernie. He was um, a nice looking guy too. They had long hair and they had their suits on and, and I'm this little hippie chick, you know, cruising up and I go, oh my gosh, those guys are good looking. I think I'm gonna go in and buy a pair of bell bottoms. Remember the dittos? The, the, the stitching on the back? Yeah. Well, I was into those. So quickly, I went into the store to try on some bell-bottom Levi's. To my surprise, Ron came over to see if I needed any help. And I was dying. I couldn't believe that he followed me over and then started flirting with me. And um, he asked me what size I was looking for. So I told him, oh, well, I wear a size five. And he said, oh, you look like a size seven. I'll bring you both sizes. <laughs> so I'm in the dressing room trying to get into this size, the small size five, which I couldn't button the button. So yes, he was right. The size seven fit, the five were too tight. After buying the ditto Levi's, Ron asked me for my phone number. And I thought, oh my gosh, I can't believe it. He's asking for my phone number. Oh, here it is. <laughs> and uh, at the time I was living uh, in Burbank, California, and um, he was living, I think, in um, Pasadena at the time and, and working in Balm Park. But when I left the store, I, uh, I went back to visit my friends, but they were different. They were excited to share about how they got saved at a little church in Costa Mesa, and they started talking about this bald man that, uh, named Chuck Smith who uh, has this amazing little church. And would you like to come? So they immediately invited me and my sister, which my sister's here today, Stephanie. And we went to church with them to hear Pastor Chuck. We went to the fall. Oh, we went the following Sunday to Maranatha Village. Remember, girls, uh, the little shopping center, and then Chuck's church was right there. And uh, to our surprise, there was over 200 hippies, <laughs> all long hairs, um, all gathered to hear this man, Pastor Chuck. And they were hungry. You could tell they were excited about hearing God's word. And another thing I noticed, too, is they all carried their Bibles. I know the laptops are cool and the phones are awesome, but girls, there's nothing like carrying the love letter that Jesus Christ has given to us. Carry it. Read it. Teach it to your children. Share it with your friends and family. God's word's powerful and it's able to get into your heart and change your mind. Chuck sat on a small st stage and shared the love of Jesus as he read the Gospel of John. As I listened and read the words of the Bible, the words popped out and came alive. A light came on and I began to understand God's love for me, and how he wanted a personal relationship with me, and that he had a plan for my life, which I was looking for. Not the hippie love that they all promoted back then. That was more rebellious and lustful and crazy at that time. But it wasn't the true love of God. It was more of a selfish love. 
we accepted the Lord into our hearts and confessed our sins. We, my sister and I also got baptized at Pirate's Cove in 1971, along with 2,000 other people. It was awesome, ladies, to be on the cliff. I don't know if you've ever been down to Corona Del Mar at Pirate's Cove, but it is incredibly beautiful. I recommend that you go down there and check it out this summer. But Chuck had baptisms there, and it, it was just an amazing picture. I, I remember seeing a picture at uh, Costa Mesa of the, one of the baptisms there, and they are still doing baptisms there. But it was great to participate and be part of that. And as I got baptized, as Chuck uh, put us into the, the water and brought me and Stephanie out, I felt the Holy Spirit just washing and cleansing and releasing and um, all the yuck and the sin and the past. And um, I knew that I knew that I was born again and that God loved me. As time went on, the business of the world slowly crept in. It, drown it started to drown out the things of God. I stopped reading my Bible. I stopped going to churches often. And I began to backslide. Be careful, girls, of this mindset. Um, I've noticed a trend, and I've been talking to other pastors' wives, too, and you girls are the exception because you're here today and, uh, and you love going to church. But I've noticed a trend of apathy and laziness and people getting caught up in the business of the world, and they're not going to church as often. They're not reading their Bibles as they should. Um, and be careful of this. This is how the enemy creeps in and tries to kill, still, and destroy our faith. So sure enough, I started um, backsliding. A friend stopped by, another old friend, uh, stopped by. I had moved to Huntington Beach with my, uh, fam my sisters, and uh, we rented a house. And uh, um, this friend had two tickets to the Hollywood Palladium to see Rod Stewart. And I thought, oh, wow, a free ticket? Yeah, let's go to the Hollywood Palladium. So I jumped in the car, and we, we drove up to L.A. and went to the Hollywood Palladium and saw Rod Stewart. And as I was walking up to the bar, there was... Uh, a balcony section where they had the bar so we were going up to get a drink and be careful of drinking girls that can sidetrack you also I know the big thing is you know wine tasting and and it's okay to to drink and yes we're not under the law but be careful so we went to the concert and guess who was there that stone fox from the clothing store. Oh my gosh, he's here? I can't believe it. And he, he was, you know, looking good. His hair was real long. He had a Hawaiian shirt, you know, opened all the way down to, with puka shells, bell-bottom pants, and, you know, the whole the whole. Uh, package there was great and so I immediately said oh my gosh I'm going I'm going there. I'm going to go go say hello to him so I immediately walked up to him and started a conversation I found out that he had moved to Seal Beach and I told him that oh I just moved to Huntington so he asked me for my phone number and I said well wait a minute you didn't call me the first time I gave your phone number. He said, oh, I lost it. Sure. But, you know, God has a sense of humor. So we started to see each other. And I knew enough not to go out with a non-believer. We're not to be unequally yoked with non-believers. Young ladies, be careful with non-believing boyfriends and hanging out with the cool people. Um, God will provide. 
a Christian husband for you. Don't go my way. I went the hard way. I had, I had, I'm the kind of person that learns the hard way. So my spirit was willing, but my flesh was weak. Soon after disobeying, disobeying God's word and going my own way, I became pregnant. The flesh is contrary to the spirit. Those who are in the flesh cannot please God. So I was in trouble. I was panicking. And I'm thinking, oh my gosh, what am I going to do now? In Galatians 5.16, it says, walk in the spirit and you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Ephesians 6, the whole chapter talks about the spiritual warfare that goes on as you become a believer and how we're to be aware of the tricks and snares of the enemy and the traps that he sets for us that we can fall into that will drag us away from Jesus. James 4, 4 and 7 says, Therefore submit to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. The devil takes advantage of any area of weakness in all of us. Ask God to give you victory over the influences of the devil, the world, and your flesh. They're all tugging at you constantly. I, um, I think it's even heavier now because we're living in the last days. And I think Satan just wants to rip us all off any way, he, and he's a dirty fighter. And he'll use any trick. So beware of what's going on in your life and be aware of God's presence and know and study God's word because that'll keep you from sin. Uh, sin will keep you from God, but the word of God will keep you from sin. Hmm. Okay. Lost my place. Okay, the world and the flesh. Okay, the wicked one will constantly seek to entice you. Resist those voices and listen to your heavenly father's voice. And don't only listen, girls, obey. Now, I know, I don't know about you, but I was very rebellious. And my mom was always giving me instructions, and I'd listen, but I would never obey, and I'd end up in trouble. God has a wonderful plan for your life, but Satan plans to kill, still, and destroy your life. Be aware, ladies. When I found out I was pregnant, I panicked. I called up a clinic, made an appointment. An abortion was real controversial back in the 70s, and the abortion clinics were starting to open up. Um, I found one. Uh, actually in Burbank where my mom was li living. So I thought, well, I'll drive up to my mom's house and I need to tell her anyway. And so I drove to my mom's and I talked to her and she gave me some good advice. She encouraged me to keep the baby, said it will, and she wasn't a Christian. She said that... Um, it will help you to mature and grow up, and I certainly needed to mature and grow up. She also said, if Ron really loves you, he will marry you. And that stuck in my brain. I said, well, maybe we have a future. So I did, on my way home, actually over to Ron's house, I was praying, oh God, I'm in trouble now. It's always when you get in trouble that you cry out for God. And uh, so I drove to Ron's house and told him I was going to keep the baby. Ron became angry. He told me he didn't want to get married, that he didn't want to see me again. So I slapped his face, <laughs> got my VW, and drove home. And I was crying out to God, asking him to forgive me and to help me. When I got home, I opened the Bible to my favorite scripture, Psalms 37, 4, 5, and 6. Delight yourself in the Lord, 
and he shall give you the desires of your heart. Commit your way to the Lord, and he shall bring it to pass. Rest in the Lord and wait patiently. Boy, I don't like waiting. I don't know about you, but you think after having five kids, I would learn patience? But we need to be, wait patiently for him. As I was praying and reading, the Holy Spirit spoke to me and said, God, Debbie, you are going to have to wait. That Ron would get saved, you would get married, and that, you would be, that Ron would become a pastor of a Calvary Chapel. And I went, what? God, is that you? And I don't think I've ever heard and felt the Holy Spirit is powerful in my little bedroom at home, crying out to him. And he answered. He's faithful to answer your prayers. He loves us. So yes, I had to wait. I was a single mom for three uh, years. And uh, we had a son. His name is Tyson hippie name. It means um, God of peace in German. <clears throat> I went to my, all my friends. I went back to church, told all my friends to pray for us. Ron came back from traveling, and he had contacted hepatitis B. And when I opened the door, he kept in contact with me, but he liked traveling. He wanted to be single, didn't want to, you know, get married, as most young men don't want to do. So he ended up, um, after contacting the hepatitis B, he knocked on my door coming back from, I think it was uh, Jamaica or something, and he had contacted hepatitis. I opened the door and I go, oh my gosh, Ron, you got hepatitis. His eyes were yellow, his skin was kind of yellow, and he didn't look good at all. So I invited him in and we talked and uh, he just got sicker. He went to the doctors and yes, you have hepatitis. Go home, stay in bed for two months. There's nothing you can do for hepatitis. Your liver either heals or it doesn't heal. So Ron was so sick that he could not get out of bed for two months. So uh, my brother-in-law and Sandy opened up their home and they quarantined their house and they kept Ron there and I helped take care of him. My brother-in-law asked him if he wanted to listen to Chuck Smith Bible study tapes and need needless to say, Ron said yes. So while he was in bed for two months, Paul kept, well, here, listen to this one. Hey, did you finish the other one? And before you know it, Ron gr grew in his appetite and he said, yeah, I want to finish the book of John, get some more tapes and so he did he finished the book of john those two months laying in bed got stronger and then uh, prayed to accept jesus uh, into his heart and the story begins i asked him uh or oh so he he got out of bed paul asked him if he wanted to listen oh to tapes needless to say ron got saved and he had a hunger and a thirst for God's word and decided they had just opened the Bible uh, Conference Center for uh, a Bible College, and Ron uh, went to the second semester there. So I would go up to uh, the Conference Center uh, not only to show the other cute hippie chicks that were up there that, oh, we're a couple and we have a baby, so hands off. I'm not stupid. <laughs> so after he finished Bible college, uh, we met over at uh, his house and um, I said, well, Ron, what did the Lord show you? Are you going to marry me or not? And he said, uh, yeah, sure. <laughs> That's how romantic my husband is. <laughs> so we got married. And uh, we started a home Bible study. It grew. Oh, perfect timing. We started a home Bible study. It grew. 
uh, in Seal Beach. And um, a lot of his friends got saved. A lot of our family members got saved. And Pastor Raul Reese married us in 1976, and he also ordained Ron in 1980. And Pastor Chuck Smith, we went to Pastor Chuck Smith, and he told us to go for it. So we rented uh, a facility in Seal Beach, just like this one here. It was, it's called McGaw Elementary School. And we rented that facility for 16 years. And then we bought property in Westminster and built a church. We have been there for, I can't believe it, 21 years now. So we have five adult children and now five grandchildren. So God has blessed my life. And even though I went through trials, God was faithful. He truly loves us, and he loves you. Ladies, don't forget that. If you're here today and you're going through a trial, ask some of us to pray for you. We would love to. Um, and God does have a beautiful plan also for your life. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you for the amazing things that you have done in my life. And Lord, uh, you have blessed above and beyond. I pray, Father, for the rest of this conference that as we, learn, we open up your love letter and we listen, prepare our hearts and minds to receive the Holy Spirit, and what you want us to take away from this conference today. Bless the food, the fellowship, the teachers, and the worship. We love you and praise you. Help us, Lord, to walk in the Spirit and not to fulfill the lusts of the flesh, but to be faithful to you and committed to you and Lord, if we're in a slump or we might be feeling that we're backsliding or we're just not into going to church as much, I pray, Father, that you would renew a right spirit within us, that you would fill us overflowing today, and that, Lord, we would go out and tell the world who desperately needs Jesus Christ as Savior. Give us boldness and a burden for the lost. Help us, Lord, to open up our Bibles and read scripture to them that, Lord, they could experience and know the true love of God. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. <laughs>